Hey everyone, it's Jay Rodriguez here with Real People, Real Voices, and today we're tackling the conversation of ending stigma through sex education. Now, while the queer community is more visible than ever before, there's still a taboo surrounding LGBTQ sexuality, as well as how and when to effectively teach it. So without further ado, let me introduce these wonderful educators who are joining us today to help us navigate these complicated waters. We have Tim Wang, Director of Advocacy and Policy at Chicago's Howard Brown Health. And we also have Alex Liu, creator of Sexplanation, a documentary film about shame-free sex. Tim, tell us about Howard Brown Health and what its mission is. Uh, so Howard Brown Health is the largest LGBTQ community health center in the Midwest United States. We have 12 clinic locations across the wonderful city of Chicago. Um, we're also a federally qualified health center, uh, which means that we provide all of our services, um, including primary care, behavioral and mental health care, sexual reproductive care, dental, you know, anything you can imagine, all those services, regardless of a patient's ability to pay or insurance status. Um, and our mission is to eliminate LGBTQ health disparities and also ensure that all people have access to affirming and high quality health care. What inspired you to take on stigma surrounding LGBTQ sex, sexuality, and sexual health? So I grew up in a you know, very traditional Chinese Christian household. Um, we're talking about like basically anything related to sex was super taboo. Definitely being gay was taboo. Um, and so it's something that I grew up with a lot of stigma around. I didn't talk about it at all with anyone in my family. Um, so over time, as I've you know, become an adult, I've come to recognize you know, how growing up in that sort of environment of extreme stigma has really impacted my own, like coming to terms with my sexuality, uh, how it's impacted my own sexual health. Um, so just coming from that background and seeing how stigma can really have an effect on health, I just think that it's so important now to just normalize sexual health um, and just normalize taking care of your sexual health as a regular part of taking care of your overall health. I couldn't agree more. Now, Alex, let's talk about Sexplanation and how it came to be. My documentary, Sexplanation, uh, is born out of my deep anger around why it's so difficult to talk about sex in, when you're growing up, uh, why it's so difficult to have good sex education when you're young. Um, you know, I was lucky that I had parents when I came out, got me good sex education. Uh, and then I quickly realized that the curricula I needed isn't new. It's been around for decades. It's just not taught in schools. So I thought, you know, I have a science background. I have a reporting background. Um, if no one is teaching this, maybe I can try. Uh, so I just traveled, you know, the U.S. and Canada talking to sex educators, researchers, uh, scientists who were doing this work and asking them my deepest, darkest fears, fantasies, shames, seeing what they had to say. And uh, yeah, hopefully people can get uh, something out of it because I know I got a lot uh, about how to be a fully authentic, uh, you know, loving, ex lovingly expressed sexual being. What challenges do you see in trying to educate people about LGBTQ sexuality? Right now, sex ed is so much framed around around public health, around, you know, about medical issues, around minimizing risk. And it's not at all really about the questions we really have when we're 13, 14, 15. How do I do this thing and make it feel good? How do I have sex and make it pleasurable, not for, for me, for my partner, for my partners? Uh, you know, is what I'm doing normal? You know, all these things that people really are concerned about, you know, devoid of gender, devoid of orientation. Yes, that's important. Um, but, but if we can just kind of break out of those categories and just talk about how do we maximize pleasure in the safest way, that's kind of how I'd want to frame sex education. And then we're miles away from that. Tim, let's get your take. What do you see as the biggest challenges? Um, I think the biggest challenge is stigma, like we've been talking about. Um, in our society, talking about sex is so stigmatized. It's seen as something that's very private that you can't share with anyone else. Um, and I think that goes tenfold for queer sex. Um, so anytime we talk about teaching inclusive sex ed in schools, I think the inevitable response is that one like really appalled parent that's like, my kids are just too young to learn about that. Um, so I think one way that we respond to that is, you know, when we're talking about offering comprehensive and inclusive sex ed, um, it's also sex ed that's age appropriate. 
Um, so maybe we don't talk about the you know, actual mechanics of sex until people are a little bit older, um, but kids can certainly start learning about all the different identities that people have. They can start learning about the different relationships that people have. And like, if you think about it, young kids are already learning that stuff. Um, so like you look at the, the movies and TV shows that kids watch, um, it's predominantly, you know, heterosexual uh, cisgender relationships, but you know, kids are learning about those identities and those relationships. And it's really just about expanding that to learn about all identities and all relationships. So Tim, what are the most important lessons that you could impart to our community about their sexuality and their health? Um, yeah, so I would just emphasize that, you know, I think it's important and also empowering to take care of your sexual health, um, just as we do take care of our physical health and our mental health. Um, I think that, you know, we've all had a really difficult um, past year and a half uh, with the pandemic and everything else that's gone on. I feel like it's been um, really traumatic for a lot of people. And so I think one act of resilience and one act of you know, self-empowerment is really taking your own health into your own hands and saying that you're going to do what you need to do to stay healthy and to thrive even in these difficult situations. And I think a big part of that is making sure that um, your sexual health is, you know, you're up to date, you're healthy in that area. Um, so I think normalizing like the act of getting an STI or HIV test, um, talking about your status, um, just treating it like it's any other kind of like physical health checkup that you might get um, could go a long way towards just reducing stigma around sexual health in general um, and moving us towards a, a more sex positive kind of viewpoint in society. So Alex, I'll ask you the same thing. When I think about myself at 13, uh, the idea of saying I was gay made me want to kill myself, literally. Um, and now, you know, I made a documentary all about my sex life. It's, it's totally, but it took 20 years of me having tiny little conversations with people who I felt comfortable with to be able to get to this point. You know, uh, it, it's difficult. Um, but what you do is you just find the people, you know, you know, maybe you talk about a guy you think is cute. And if they are able to listen to you not judgmentally, you know, keep them in your life. Maybe you talk about this thing you heard online. And if you know, you, you, you're able to just find those little baby steps. And in 20 years, who knows, you'll build a community that really helps uplift and support your sexual health. Well, it's been incredible talking to you both about the work that you're doing. And I want to thank you so much for being here. If you want to learn more about Howard Brown Health or Sexplanation, visit the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.